Andrew Stanton had just finished the biggest project of his career. He had spent over two years working toward a single goal, and in that time, his son Ben had grown from a toddler into an active and playful young boy. Stanton now finally had the opportunity to play with his son. Out of protective instincts, he warned Ben of every minute danger around him. Don't touch that. Don't do that. You're going to fall in there. Before he knew it, he had wasted one of his few opportunities to spend quality time with his son. By the way, Andrew Stanton worked at Pixar, and he had just completed Toy Story 2. This particular moment with his son inspired him to write the screenplay for Finding Nemo. Unfortunately, audiences didn't just get to see this scene recreated in the animated film with the Clownfish cast. They saw it in their own families. Parents today are more concerned, protective, and controlling than their parents had been. No respectable mom would dare go without a V-chip on the television, Neosporin in her pocket, and a nanny cam in her child's room. Any mother who lacks those essential tools carries the stigma of being a slacker mom. While this over-controlling parenting style might have been a source of trouble for the infamous Fish family, it isn't really a bad thing, right? My own generation benefits from our parents' passion for guiding us into safer and more structured lives. Who really wants a slacker mom when you can have one who shows her love for you through her extensive involvement in your life? Or could we actually be worse for the wear because of our parents' obsession with bubble wrapping us? It's a difficult question. Can parents care too much? With an exploration into what caused the death of the slacker mom and a look at how new generations of Americans are affected by their parents' controlling ways, we will see some of the shortcomings of the neurotic parenting style recently popularized and realize that perhaps a little bit of breathing room is just what our kids need to grow. So what made parents switch from slacking to smothering? According to the recent book, The Battle Hymn of the Tiger Mother by Amy Chua, Parents become excessively involved in their kids' lives to help them achieve high levels of success. Chua believes there are some decisions children couldn't possibly make on their own. My daughters were never allowed to attend a sleepover, watch TV or play computer games, get any grade less than an A, choose their own extracurricular activities, or not to play the piano or violin. This author has a huge fan base because her morals reflect modern parenting practices. To keep their children from ever making a bad mistake or missing out on a big opportunity, parents now find it necessary to choose priorities and even interests for their sons and daughters. Chua herself once said that she knows best for her children and therefore overrides all of their desires and preferences. Okay, so Amy Chua might be the extreme example of a soccer mom pushing her kids too far, but fathers can be just as guilty. Wayne Bryan raised a pair of twin boys who eventually went on to be the world's leading male tennis doubles team. In his book, Raising Your Child to Be a Champion in Athletics, Arts, and Academics, he discusses how extremely high standards and strict rules are the only way to have successful children. But why are books like his and Chua's selling so well? It's because parents today are beginning to equate their children's plaques and trophies with winning the game of parenthood. Maybe that's why your local Barnes & Noble sells a cookbook in tech. With winning the game of parenthood, in a recent survey, many parents responded that their children's academic success reflects successful parenting. Maybe that's why your local Barnes & Noble sells a cookbook entitled Brain Food, Recipes to Boost Your Child's Intelligence. While you're at it, you might as well snag one of those CDs with classical music on it for your infant to fall asleep to. While some parents are obsessed with controlling their kids' lives to help them achieve success, others do it out of paranoia. These parents want to keep their children safe from every minute danger around them. To prevent your toddler from falling in a well, why not buy a kinder cord? This retractable child tether allows, quote, three feet of freedom for both you and your child. Only a slacker mom could even consider taking a walk with her son without having him leashed to her wrist. While a $20 investment might seem like a small price to pay for your child's well-being, parents these days are taking legal action over trivial safety concerns. In Connecticut, one woman convinced her city to remove three hickory trees because she was afraid that a stray nut might fall into the pool where her nut-allergic grandson occasionally swam. Texan parents were willing to go through background checks just to help out with their children's second-grade holiday party. 
Parents these days will go through great lengths to keep kids safe. Not just from pedophiles, but from a germ. As Muffy Mead Farrell illustrated in her book, Confessions of a Slacker Mom, it's not enough to keep crumbs off the kitchen counter. These days, you have to keep the counters bacteria free. Lenore Skenazy is perhaps the biggest advocate for the slacker mom. Skenazy started a blog and what some consider to be a movement called Free Range Kids. Because of her free range philosophy, this Yale educated mother was dubbed America's worst mom by the media, a title even harsher than slacker. What kind of parent would ever allow their daughter to sell Girl Scout cookies door to door in this day and age? Newspapers are littered with headlines of child abductors and predators living among us. What parent would ever let their child go to the grocery store alone? Skenazy comes back with a strong statistic. The odds of a child being kidnapped and killed by a stranger in the U.S. are 1 in 1.5 million. Works like Free Range Kids and Confessions of a Slacker Mom don't reject safety. They reject absurdity. We all know that helmets and seatbelts are good things, but not everyone is aware of the extent of the paranoia around them. For example, a generation ago, Halloween was a day for kids. It was their ritual to get dressed up, get candy, and stand off of the streetlights that came on. No one even considered it to be dangerous to let their kids go trick-or-treating because there were friends and neighbors in every doorway to keep an eye on all the action. These days, it's a war zone for protective parents. Nearly all trick-or-treaters are accompanied by an adult as they collect their goodies. Parents have become so worried about their children being poisoned by a stranger's candy that they've ruined the magic that used to be Halloween. In case you always double-check your kid's candy for traces of poison, here's a comforting statistic. According to Skenazy, there are zero incidents ever recorded of a child being poisoned by a stranger's Halloween candy. Zero. So where did this fear even come from? Why is it that people who spent their youth riding on the handlebars of their friends' bikes, drinking out of the garden hose, and climbing trees won't permit their children to do the same? Andrew Stanton, our favorite executive at Pixar, said in one interview, I became obsessed with this premise that fear can deny a good father from being one. Lenore Skenazy maintains, even after being titled America's Worst Mom, that microscopic risks are definitely worth taking. She writes, you don't remember the times your dad held your handlebars. You remember the day he let go. So now that we've established that parents are essentially crazy, let's look at the backlash from some of their neurotic ways. Amy Chua, our tiger mother, once received a handmade birthday card from her daughter. Now, remember, Chua loves her daughters and wants them to be the very best they can be at all costs. Amy Chua disapproved of the quality of the card, ripped it up, and told her young daughter, not good enough. Muffy Mead Farrow, our slacker mom, observes, I do know a boy and a girl who have benefited from their parents' high regard for academic achievements, but they've suffered from it too. They're not even familiar with the concept of unstructured play. When asked to play outside, they don't want to go. When booted outside anyway, they have nothing to do and just hang out on the porch until they're allowed back in. On her own child's academic career, she writes, I can't be convinced, especially at her age, that it's important for her to be the first one to read or do equations or identify lots of kinds of dinosaurs. Without a few germs, kids never develop a good immune system. Without free time, they never develop creativity. And without the opportunity to think for themselves, they never develop the ability to do so. So the slacker mom loves her kids after all. While some parents are obsessed with having the most safe and accomplished child possible, She's just worried about having the most well-rounded. Her kids might swallow a bug every once in a while, but at least they won't be afraid of their own Halloween candy. They may not all be prodigies in music and athletics, but they also won't contract a stress ulcer before they're old enough to drive. Let's cut the kinder cord and consider giving our kids a fourth foot of freedom.